Hi friends, in this video, we're going to talk about how to use OR 2.0 client credentials flow to secure machine to machine communication. So machine to machine communication means a script talking to another script or an application talking to another application. There is no human intervention involved. That means a password entering screen or username password entering screen will not be present. The communication is between two backends. After explaining the OR 2.0 client credentials flow, we will also do a demo by implementing client credentials flow in the Keycloak server. If you don't know what OR 2.0 specification is or if you don't know how to easily install Keycloak in Windows, I've already made a video on that and I will leave the link of those videos in the description of this video. All right, let's get started. So this is the terminology in OR 2.0, right? The persons or human beings who enter passwords are called users and the clients are the applications which actually request tokens from the identity server or the OAuth server and the resource APIs or API servers will validate those tokens and authorize the clients when they request for data. So in the context of client credentials flow, the communication is between machine to machine. So the communication would be between client and resource server. So the client would request access token from the identity server or the OAuth server and attach that access token in the request to the resource server and resource server will validate the token and if the token is authorized then resource server or api server will send the desired response to the client so this is basically the client credentials flow so let's see the workflow of how client credential flow happens so the first step would be the client application will request the secure token service or the oauth server for token but for this the client should be registered in the secure token service and when the client is registered it will get a client id and a client secret so while requesting the token, the client should add client ID and client secret in the request for requesting the token. And then the secure token service or the OAuth server will validate the client ID and client secret. And if it's okay, then it will send the access token in return. After receiving the access token, the client API will make a request to the resource server or the API server with the access token attached in the request. The resource server will actually validate the access token and see whether the client scope is satisfying and the client's token is valid. And then if everything is okay, the API will authorize the client and send the desired response in the result. So this is how client credentials flow works. So in a nutshell, client will get the token and add the token and request the resource API server for the response. All right, let's try to demonstrate client credentials flow with the STS or OAuth server. In our case, let's try to use Keycloak as the OAuth server. So in our previous video, we have already downloaded and extracted the Keycloak server, right? So let's try to run the server now. So I opened the server folder in command prompt and let's try to run the server now, am I right? bin kc.bat start dev so this will start the keycloak server and now the keycloak server is started so let's try to open the keycloak server the keycloak server listens over the port 8080 so i'm gonna write localhost port 8080 and the keycloak portal is open let's try to access the admin console and let's try to log in with the admin credentials i've created an admin user called key admins and it has a password so let's try to sign in and now this is the keycloak user interface so in the client credentials workflow the client application should be registered, right? So let's try to register a client application in Keycloak. Instead of registering the client in the main master realm, let's try to create another realm because it's a good practice to create and manage clients in the non-master realm for security purposes. So let's try to create a realm name called myorg. All right, we've created a new realm called myorg here. And now let's try to register a client in this realm. So I'm going to the client section and these are all the default clients but let's try to create a client for our purpose so create client and let's try to make the client id as test api client and let's try to write some name here test api client let's try to click next and let's enable the client authentication and keep only service accounts roles as authentication flow so selecting these options will make the client's authorization flow as client credentials flow in fact if you click on this question mark you can see this is used for the client credentials grant flow. So let's try to click next and you don't need to enter anything here. Click save and now our client is created successfully. We have the client ID but we need to have the client secret also. For that go to the credentials tab and click save and now the client secret is generated. You can see the client secret. So we can use this client ID and client secret to fetch the access token. Let's see what all the scopes our client has. So these are all the default scopes our client has. But let's suppose the resource API server actually expects another client scope. It will be present in the client scope section. Let's try to create a client scope now. Let the name of the client scope be test API access. 
let's say to click save and now we have created a client scope called test api access and let's say to attach the scope to the client so if this is our client test api client and let's say to add a new client scope here add client scope test api access add and here we have two options default and optional if we select default by default the scope will be added in the client scopes while getting the access token but if we select the optional the client has to explicitly ask for the scope and then only the scope will be appended in the access token so for our example let's select optional that means for this scope the client should explicitly ask for the scope name all right we have registered our client in the tree cloak oauth server so the first step in the flow is authenticate with client id and client secret to the oauth server so how do i send this authentication request to the oauth server where does the oauth server listen to this token request so that can be easily found out in the realm settings of our realm and here if you scroll down you can see the endpoints which is open id endpoint configuration so if you click on this you will open a page called the well known configuration page so this is as per the oauth 2.0 standard and in this page you can see the links of all important endpoints of the realm so we need to request the access token right so for that we have a token endpoint url so this is the url where you have to send the request for requesting the access token so let's say to copy this url so we need to do a request right let's say to do the request in vs code so i'm going to take a blank folder and open this with vs code let's say to create a new file i'll just name it client.http so let's say to paste the token endpoint so this is the token endpoint url right for requesting the token I have to do a post request to this endpoint and the content type would be application x url form encoded and i need to give a post body by the way i am using the rest client extension of the vs code you can also use postman to send the http requests you can see i am showing the extension here so this is the extension rest client it's like postman but you can run it in vs code so we are sending a post request to the token endpoint and i have to write the post body right so in the post body i'm going to write the client id equal to the client id so let's go to our clients our test api client this is the client id test api client and client secret go to the credentials tab copy this client secret and scope suppose i want the access token to include the scope called test api access since this is the optional scope you have to explicitly ask for the scope while requesting the access token so i am also including scope equal to the name of the scope and one more thing you have to include in the post request body is grant type equal to client credentials so let's do the word wrap here so that we can see the whole text so this is the post request body grant type client credentials client id client secret and scope so let's try to send the request and in the request we got the successful response that contains the access token so this is the access token and in the response we also got some other things like what are the scopes of this client and when is the access token being expired and so on but access token is what we are concerned because we have to send this access token in the request to the resource server so in our flow we have successfully got the access token and in the next step the client application will send the access token to the api server and the api server should validate this access token right so let's try to copy this access token it looks like gibberish but it's actually jwt or json web token so to actually see what's in this token let's go to an awesome page called jwt.io so here we can actually visualize our jwts so i'm going to copy our jwt and paste in the jwt here and here you can see the decoded version it actually has some important data about the access token and notice the colors here there are two dots in this access token and hence the access token has three sections so the first section is the header of the access token the second section is the main payload or the message of the access token and the third section is actually the signature of the access token so how did this become this well actually this is the base64 encoded version of the json so if you just do a base64 decode of this string you will get this json that's all and it's the same with this message body also if you do a base64 decode of this string you will get the json and now when this jwt or the access token is received at the api server or the resource server it can decode the jwt and read the json of the header and payload the payload contains all the required information to authorize the client application you can see the client id is present what are all the scopes of this client id are present so if the required scope to authorize the client is present in the scopes list then you can authorize the client application 
and the JWT or the access token is actually a short lived token. By default, its life will be five minutes. So the time at which the token gets expired is also present in this EXP attribute. It's actually a Unix epoch timestamp, but if you convert to normal date time, you can see the time at which it expires. The expired time of the access tokens can be seen at realm settings. And in the token section, you can see access tokens lifespan will be five minutes. So if the client gets an access token from the OAuth server, it will be valid for five minutes only. So using this payload section of the JWT, the resource server or the API server can easily authorize the client application. Then why is this header and the signature part given in the JWT? You know, the JWT can be tampered because encoding and decoding base 64 string doesn't require any encryption. So in order to ensure the integrity of the JWT, the OAuth server signs the header and payload and appends the signature as the third section in the JWT. So the integrity of the JWT can be checked easily by the resource server by actually taking these two sections and creating a signature using the algorithm provided in the header and the public key of the OAuth server and matching the signature with the signature of the JWT. In our example, in the header, we can see the algorithm for signing the JWT is RS256. But where is the public key? You know, there is an attribute called key ID in the header. It specifies the key ID of the OAuth server. So using this key ID, you can look up the public key of the OAuth server to sign this JWT. So how can I locate the public keys of the OAuth server, which are used to sign the JWTs? Again, in the well-known configuration page, there is an attribute called JWKS URI. So if you click on this, you can see the public keys used by the OAuth server to sign the JWTs. And the key ID which you are concerned here is this one. So let's try to copy this key ID and search in this page. So there are two keys present in this keys page and the required key is this one. So this is the public key information of the OAuth server using which we can sign the JWT and check the integrity by verifying this signature. Well, in JWT.io, by default, when I pasted this JWT, I got signature verified. But I did not mention the public key here, right? Actually, behind the scenes, JWT used the issuer URL and estimated the public key page and actually it got the public information and pasted it by default here. If I just remove this, you can see invalid signature. But let's try to copy paste this key information, copy this key which you are interested in, copy this key and paste it here and you can see signature verified. I can just prove you that JWT.io fetched the public keys automatically. Let's go to the network tab, reload this page and after the page is completely loaded, let's try to remove all the network requests here and let's try to paste our JWT and here you can see this page has requested to the OpenID configuration on the well-known page and in the response, you will get the JWKS URI and using the JWKS URI, JWT.io has got the key information and automatically pasted it here in the public key section and it has verified the integrity and said that the signature is verified. So the last step of authorizing the client application by analyzing the JWT or the access token is completed at the API resource server. So now since the client application is authorized, the resource server can now respond with the required data to the client application. So this is how using Keycloak or any OAuth server you can actually execute the client credentials workflow. We have shown a working demo of using the client credentials workflow. Of course, we did not create a server and a client Python code or some other .NET code or something, but we have successfully demonstrated the workflow by sending the post request and fetching the tokens and actually accessing the tokens and verifying the token manually. In our upcoming videos, we will also create a Python client and a Python Flask resource server. So stay tuned for next videos. This is a demo of client credentials OAuth workflow using Keycloak. All right, now let's talk about the next topic, which is token revocation. You see, in this workflow, we are seeing that the client is getting the token and there is no means the client can invalidate the token. That means the client wants to invalidate the token because it knew that the token is compromised or there is some security issue or something like that. So to invalidate the token, there is a revocation endpoint. So let's try to copy this URL and you can send a post request to this revocation endpoint and say that the content type is application WWX form URL encoded and give the post request now. The post request will be the same client ID and client secret. Let's give the token that is to be invalidated. The token is the token which we have fetched now. And the next thing we need to add is 
token type hint so token type hint means i am telling that i am revoking an access token here let's say to separate these two requests by three hashtags all right let's now send a revocation request send request and here we got okay that means this token is revoked at the server so now if this token is sent to the server for validation the server will say that this token is not valid obviously if the token is expired also the server will say it is not valid if the token signature is also not valid the server will say the token is not valid but even if you manually revoke the token then also the server will say that the token is not valid but in our client credentials flow we were validating the token at the resource server itself by verifying the signature so how can the resource server actually validate the token at the server to know whether it's revoked or not so this can be done using the introspection endpoint so let's try to copy this url and let's try to create a new document for api server so i'm going to write post the introspection url let's try to word wrap this and i'm going to say the content type would be application x ww form url encoded and let's try to create the post body now so i'm going to say the token is the same token and for doing the token validation also the resource server should be registered as a client in the OAuth server right so let's try to register the resource server also as a client in our OAuth server so i'm going to the OAuth server clients and let's create a client for the resource server also so i'm going to write test api resource server and click next and it's going to be client authentication service accounts roles because we are using the client credentials flow here and click next and click save so let's go to the credential section save the client credentials now you got the client secret copy the client secret so client secret equal to and the client id is test api resource server so i have registered the resource server and mentioned the client credentials here and i am mentioning the token in the post request body and i am telling the OAuth server to check this token let's try to save this let's try to send the request now and you can see active equal to false that means this token is not valid so let's try to create a valid token and try to do the introspection so let's try to send the token request again from the client and i got the access token here and let's try to send this access token and see whether it's successful or not so since it's the first token and we did not revoke it let's try to send the request and see whether the token is valid and here you can see the token is valid because active equal to true and all the scopes of the token are here and the client id and the expiration time everything is already present in the response so you don't need to decode the token also now let's try to revoke this token and see the validity so from the client side let me try to revoke this token and send a request now it's revoked and let's try to just verify this token again and then you'll get active equal to false because i have invalidated the token from the client so now we have covered two methods of validating the client access token the first method is by just verifying the jwt payload and the jwt signature and the second method is validating the access token at the server using the token introspection endpoint in most of the cases simply verifying the jwt signature and the jwt body for the required scopes is more than enough but if you want to accommodate this token revocation then you have to go for this token introspection endpoint where the token will be validated by the OAuth server instead of the resource server so that's it guys this is OAuth 2.0 client credentials flow and we have demonstrated it successfully using the key cloak OAuth server you can see i have created a blog post on OAuth 2.0 client credentials workflow i have also given the images and the required notes so that you can practice it yourself i have also given the references for further reading so please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.